What's up guys, tonight I'm going to be reviewing Misadventures, the fourth full-length studio album by San Diego post-hardcore outfit, Pierce the Veil. As you can see, I do not own a physical copy of the album yet. I definitely plan on buying it. So you'll just have this Pierce the Veil shirt that I, t -shirt that I have as, you know, just a little image to enjoy. You, I bet you can hear the music in the background, that music will be playing throughout. And uh, like I said, I did not own a physical copy of the album yet, but I certainly will go out of my way to get it because I love this album. This is the follow-up to their outstanding 2012 album, Collide With The Sky, an album that was probably my favorite album of 2012, certainly one of them. And this, this is just a group that takes their craft very, very seriously, and I applaud them for doing that. This is a group that does not hijack any other outer influence in terms of maybe taking influence from other genres and applying it to themselves. This is a group that knows when and how to do that and not completely hijack any of those sensibilities. This is a group that knows the kind of music they want to make and they are not ready to be deterred in their very ambitious crusade. And that's what works about Misadventures. This is a very ambitious album. This is a very hard-hitting and mature, up-tempo follow-up record to Collide With The Sky. Clocking in at about a little over 44 minutes, Dan Kornoff, who produced Cloud with the Sky, returns to produce this record, and from what I can ascertain, the group's, shall I say, connection, for a lack of a better word, their ability to just coincide with him, the, the production value is at an all-time high, and like I said, it's just... It really works to tr tremendous effect. Jenna from Tonight Alive is said to have involvement with this record, and if so, then I can definitely understand some of the pop-punk-centric moments that this album puts forth, and it does work. There's some alt-rock moments as well, and this is, this is a group that has been labeled experimental in the past. That is a very accurate statement to make, and it's probably one of the best things about them. Del delving into the actual record, I think, as you'll hear in a moment, Opening track Dive In is a very appropriately titled track to open the album. Definitely one of the best tracks off this record. Opens with some nice riffage as you hear there. And it really comes in your face. It really does not mince words for lack of better words, ladies and gentlemen. It's a, it's a track that really gets the point across. It really brings Pierce the Veil back into the post-hardcore spotlight. Especially considering that this is, this is a very highly anticipated and long-awaited album. Four years since Cloud Cla with the Sky as it was released. And the highlight, the bedrock of Misadventures has to be frontman Vic Fuentes. Vic, his performance behind the microphone, it's just, I have to give props because this is undoubtedly the best vocal performance of his career. He drives every single track on this record. He is the ideal frontman. I could not picture a different vocalist putting forth these songs, these lyrics, this kind of composition. As I mentioned earlier, the composition is very ambitious. It's, again, there's some alt-rock leaning moments, some pop-punk leaning moments, but above all else, they maintain their post-hardcore hallmarks. Those still resonate in spades. You have tracks like Lead Off Singles, Texas Is Forever, and The Divine Zero. I mean, again, going back to dive in, like these three tracks, those the, the former two in particular, really do a good job of reminding fans of how of how Pierce the Veil goes about their craft while still progressing the band. And that's a very hard thing to do, especially in a subgenre like this, where a lot of bands are label generic, and a lot of fans and detractors are terrified at the idea of a band going soft. Fear not, Pierce the Veil has not gone soft in the least bit. They are still a very mature, heavy, hard-hitting group. And that is one of the most compelling and engaging aspects about misadventures is because anyone who was afraid that they would go soft is going to be pleasantly surprised that they did not arguably my favorite track off the record circles as you hear here um would i be wrong to say that this sounds a bit atmospheric they, again they are a pretty ambitious and experimental group and it doesn't surprise me to see that kind of atmospheric intonation being being incorporated here and it's incorporated to great effect don't get me wrong you know some hard-hitting riffs and fast-paced drumming and of course Vic's outstanding performance behind the microphone this group just clicks like I have not seen certainly one of the best post-hardcore 
albums I've heard in a long time, certainly one of the most ambitious albums I've heard of any genre in some time. They did not disappoint, especially considering that I loved Cloud with the Sky. I was expecting to be a disappointment. I was expecting to like the music, but I was expecting there to be some sort of underwhelming factor. Thankfully, that is not the case. I think that particularly the chorus is, and songs like Circles and as other songs that I'll play in just a moment for you, there's a lot of replay value and as most post-hardcore bands would have, a lot of sing-along value. I'm not going to sing because I'm not the best singer. <laughs> um, plus, I don't even know the words. I've only heard the song like four times. <laughs> anyway, um, like I said, yeah, there's a lot of replay value, a lot of sing-along value, and high production value. Dan Korneff's, um his return to the producer's chair really helps bring this record home. And like I said a moment ago, their ability to just coincide with him and the production value is just at an all-time high. It really is special to see a group maintain their core hallmark and still be able to progress. They said in promotion of this record that they wanted to test themselves and keep setting the bar higher for themselves. Well, they know certainly how to raise the bar and then reach it and then some. This is a group that, as I said, definitely takes their crap seriously. So when they promise you something, they're not they're not going to underdeliver. They are going to go above and beyond what they expected themselves and what you expected them. A song like here, Gold Metal Ribbon, I think is a song that has the bit of the pop punk leaning leaning moments to it. But again, I think it works out very well, especially considering Vic's great performance. It really Oh, he really lends himself to these tracks. He, it doesn't sound forced or abrasive, despite his very harsh and raspy voice. A lot of arduous grit in there. It doesn't feel forced. It doesn't feel abrasive. It feels genuine. It feels, it feels very free-flowing. And I think that's another hard thing to do, being free-flowing while still being aggressive, still being in your face like a post-hardcore band you'd think would be. I was going to say should be, but I don't want to be, I don't want to be stereotypical. A band that you would think would kind of be harsh and, yeah, like I said, aggressive, is also a band that's very free-flowing, and that really is a testament, and yeah, it is a testament to how hard they work and how they recognize their craft, if I'm making any sense, ladies and gentlemen, because this is a group that really knows, they know each other very well. This group has been in the in the post hardcore scene scene for lack of a better word since 2007, and it seems like with every release, <clears throat> excuse me, they just click more and more and more. <clears throat> excuse me again. I mean, they're still a relatively young band. I think I'm pretty sure all the band members are what in their early to mid twenties. Yet they come in like hardened veterans, and. They should all give themselves individual and collective pats on the back because Misadventures is by far the best album I've heard so far in 2016. Time will tell if I like it more than Cloud with the Sky, but it certainly stacks up pretty well. I have to give Misadventures by Pierce the Veil 4.5 out of 5. Thank you guys for watching. Like, sub, share, all that good stuff. One final note, we'll get other tracks like Floral and Fading. We'll get some last points in. Spotify advertisement, whatever. Okay, songs like Floral and Fading, and Today I Saw the Whole World, again, have that atmospheric alt-rock um, sensibility that I mentioned a moment ago, and again, it just works. There's n I don't see anything wrong with this. Again, they know what, they know what to do. They know what to, how to apply that outer influence and still be able to apply it to themselves and not rip it off. So yeah, I really enjoyed this record. Like I said, 4.5 out of 5. Like, comment, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. I will see you guys later.